Good day everyone. Welcome to Learn with MN. In this video, we will discuss the clips and masks in the Inkscape. Clips and masks in Inkscape are powerful features used to control the visibility of objects. They allow you to create complex designs and effects by showing or hiding parts of an object. Clips are used to define visible areas of an object based on another shape. While masks use grayscale values to control the transparency of an object. Let's discuss both one by one in detail. In Inkscape, clipping restricts the visibility of one object to the shape of another object. The clipping path defines which parts of the clipped object are visible. It's similar to using a cookie cutter on cookie dough. One shape determines which parts of another shape are visible. For example, let's say we have a yellow rectangle and a gray circle. Think of the yellow rectangle as cookie dough and the gray circle as the cookie cutter. We want to show only the part of the dough that's inside the cookie cutter and hide the rest. To do this, make sure the gray circle, which is our cookie cutter, is on top of the yellow rectangle, which is our cookie dough. While clipping, always make sure the object you want to use as the clipping path is on top of the shape you want to clip. Now, select both shapes, go to the object menu, then clip, and select set clip. As you can see, the circle reveals only the area inside it, hiding the parts of the rectangle that fall outside the circle. You can edit a clip using the node tool to refine the visible area of the clipped object. Think of this as reshaping your cookie cutter after you've already cut the dough. For example, if we have a blue square that's clipped to a star shape, we can use the node tool to adjust the points of the star, changing how much of the blue square is visible. If nodes of the clipping path are not visible, make sure this option above is enabled. By clicking and dragging these nodes, you can reshape the clipping path and modify the visible parts of your clipped object. Similarly, you can also make changes to the square in the same way. This way, you have more control over the final look, allowing for precise adjustments to the clipped area. In addition to editing nodes with the node tool, you can also move and transform a clipped object using the selector tool. There are two main ways to do this. First is the release clip. For example, if we have a red square clip to a triangle shape, and we want to move the square, we can first release the clip. To do this, select the clipped object, go to the object menu, choose clip, and select release clip. Now, you can move or resize the red square and the triangle separately. Once you're happy with the changes, select both shapes again, right-click, and select Set Clip. This method lets you adjust the individual shapes before clipping them together again. The second method involves grouping the objects to be clipped and then editing them within the group. This method makes it easier to make changes without releasing the clip. For example, if we want this green circle clipped to a star shape, and we want to adjust the circle's position or add more shapes, we can group the base shape first. For this, select the green circle, and group it. Select the both star and the circle group, and clip them. Now, double-click the group to enter it. Inside the group, you can move the circle, resize it, or even add more shapes that will also be inside the clip. Like this. This way, you can make adjustments without needing to release and reapply the clip. Both methods are useful. Releasing and clipping again gives you more control over the individual elements, while grouping allows for quick adjustments and adding more shapes to the clip. Using set clip hides the shapes used to create the clip. If you want to keep those shapes visible, use set clip group instead. For example, if you want to create a clip made of these three circles, and clip them to themselves to add more shapes later, then normally you would need to group the circles, duplicate them, and use them as a clipping path over the original group circles. Instead, you can simply use the set clip group. Select the three circles, right-click, and choose set clip group. This will allow you to enter the group by double-clicking, and adding more shapes inside the clip. Like this. This method keeps the original shapes visible and editable, making it quick and easier to modify and expand your design. In Inkscape, inverse clipping is a technique where you hide part of the clipped object that is inside a clipping shape, 
rather than the usual clipping where you show only the parts inside the clipping shape. It's like using a cookie cutter to cut out the dough where it was placed and leave the rest part of the dough visible. For example, let's say we have a yellow rectangle, and we want to use a gray circle to hide the rectangle part inside the circle. To do so, go to the object menu, then clip, and select set inverse clip. Normally, clipping would show only the part of the rectangle inside the circle. But with inverse clipping, it will hide the part of the rectangle inside the circle and show the rest. Inverse clipping is useful for creating cutout effects, highlighting specific areas by hiding others, and achieving unique design elements where the focus is on the outside of a shape rather than the inside. Masking is like using a transparency film. You define a shape that controls how much of another shape is visible. Darker areas on the mask make the corresponding parts of the object more transparent, while lighter areas make them more opaque. For example, let's say we have this photo and we want to create a fade-out effect at the edges. First, create a shape that will serve as the mask. Let's say we create an ellipse. Now, fill it with a gradient fill. As we want the edges to fade out, so, we will use radial gradient with white fill in center and black fill at the edges. White areas will be more visible, and the dark areas will be more transparent on mask. Place this gradient ellipse on the top of the image. When happy with the placement, select both the image and the gradient shape, go to the object menu, choose mask, and select set mask. As you can see, the gradient has masked the image and the edges are gradually fading out based on the gradient. Using masks is great for photo editing, creating soft transitions, and adding depth to your designs by controlling the visibility of different parts of an object with precision. Like clipping, you can also edit the mask using the node tool. With the node tool, you can refine the visible area of the masked object. If nodes of the masked path are not visible, make sure this option above is enabled. Similarly, you can also transform the mask shape using the selector tool by releasing it. For example, we want to move and rotate the ellipse. To do this, select the masked object, go to the object menu, choose mask, and select release mask. Now, you can move or resize both image and masking path. Once you're happy with the changes, right-click and select Set Mask. Just like inverse clipping, we can also inverse the mask. Inverse masking reveals the parts of an object outside the masked area while gradually hiding the parts inside. This is the opposite of a regular mask, which applies transparency within the mask shape. For example, let's say we have this rectangle and we want to use this text as a mask. Select both, go to Object Menu, then Mask, and select Set Inverse Mask. Normally, masking would apply the masking within the text, like this. But with inverse masking, it will hide the part of the text and gradually show the rest shape. If I move it over other shapes, you can see it is transparent from the inside and becomes opaque gradually. You can also think of inverse masking as a difference path operation that is controlled with transparency. To learn more about clips and masks, refer to our other videos, their links are in the description. That was all for this video. If you have any queries, feel free to write in the comments section or contact us on our website, its link is in the description. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon, so you don't miss any updates. Thank you for watching.